Dear Stan, I meant to write you sooner, but I've just been busy. I've got this data science problem, and it's really bugging me. I'm lost, the data's too small, and there's so many hurdles. My manager wants this done by Monday, and she also wants confidence intervals. Who are you? Oh, oh, you scared me. I'm Stan. You're not Stan. I'm a Stan. Get out of my house. I'm calling the cops. Whoa, 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 Look, I overheard your problems with your data science project. I think I can help. <sighs> well, I guess as long as you're here, I've got this model my manager really wants me to get done by Monday, and I'm just, I'm just really stuck. She wants a robust statistical model, complete with uncertainty levels for each of the parameters. And to top it all off, I have so little data I'm working with. How am I supposed to do anything? Hmm. Sounds like you need Bayesian inference. Hi everyone, I'm Rick and welcome to my tutorial series on Bayesian inference with Stan. Simply put, Bayesian inference is a special type of mathematics that we use to combine the data that we measure about our world with a mathematical model of that world to help us better understand it. And Stan is a special programming language that we use to do Bayesian inference. Now I think both Stan and Bayesian inference are really cool and I've been lucky enough to use them both in my professional career. I often get asked about the subject and so this series is my way of sharing what I've learned with those of you who might be interested in getting started. So, why should you be interested in learning about Bayesian stats? Well, I think it really boils down to three main reasons. The first is that I think Bayesian stats makes regular statistics much easier to understand and use. Classical statistics has this reputation for being difficult to learn, especially for undergraduates. This is in part because it is essentially presented as a decision tree of seemingly unrelated statistical tests one should use in a given situation. In Bayesian stats, all inferences essentially come from the same unified framework, so it's much simpler. The results of Bayesian inference are also much more intuitive, and therefore much easier to explain to non-technical people. For example, in regular statistics, the idea of a confidence interval is actually quite confusing, not very intuitive at all. But in Bayesian statistics, credible intervals are really intuitive and much easier to explain. Bayesian inference? Why would I want to learn that? I just want confidence intervals. Wait, what's a confidence interval? Do you mean credible interval? Oh my god. Okay, well a 95% confidence interval means the interval where we are 95% confident it contains the true value of the parameter. Wait, I'm confused. So it's a statement about the interval and not the parameter? Well, if I repeat the experiment over and over, let's say a hundred times, and I keep making 95% confidence intervals, 95 of them will straddle the true value. Hmm. I'm still confused. Did you do a hundred experiments? Well, no, but... And didn't your manager want uncertainty on the parameters, not the interval? Intuitively, when you have a model with unknown parameters, you want to know what the data tells you about those unknown parameters. In Bayesian statistics, that's exactly what a credible interval means. A parameter being between 5 and 6 literally means the plausible values of the parameter lie between 5 and 6. In classical statistics, a similar statement about a confidence interval actually means that some proportion, say 95% of all of your confidence intervals from differently randomly drawn samples of the same data, will straddle the true parameter. Now, both are very useful, but one is much easier to explain. 
The second main reason to learn about Bayesian inference is that it can deal with small data sets. Look, okay, that sounds all fine, but I only have like 20 data points. No way you can build a model on that. This whole thing was just impossible from the very beginning. 20 data points? That's heaps. What? You can't build a model on 20 data points? Pfft. I could build a model on zero data points if I really wanted to. Bayesian inference works best when you have a lot of knowledge about a process, but not that much data, say around a few thousand data points. In a world where we're collecting more and more data every day, we can't forget about the applications where the data is low. Sports is a really good example. We know a lot about sports and we know a lot about how games are played, but there hasn't actually been that many games that have been played. For example, in Australian rules football, only 200 professional games are played a year, not very much at all. Actually, in this series, all of the examples will be sports related because of this reason. The last reason to care about Bayesian inference is because it gives you a formal way to encode knowledge, structure and constraints into your model. Stuff that might live outside of the data itself. This is really useful because oftentimes we do have knowledge about whatever we are studying that lives outside of the data. In fact, as you'll see, this knowledge can be used to supplement the raw data itself if you don't have that much to begin with. All right, all right, all right. You can stand help. But I'm just not sure I can learn everything in such a short amount of time. My manager wants this by Monday, and I don't know anything about conditional probability and stats. I'm a data scientist, I'm not a mathematician. Well, do you know what a histogram is? Yeah. Do you know what a normal distribution is? Yeah. Can you take the logarithm of- Yeah, 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 I've, I've done high school maths. Okay, well then you really shouldn't have any problem then. When learning Bayesian inference in the typical way, I think that there's too much emphasis on theory at the start, and not enough on practical application. One of the problems is that people think that you need a PhD in conditional probability to start doing anything. And that's just not true. Now, you need to know it to an extent, but you actually don't need to know that much in order to get started. Also, there's so little explanation between how the theory and the tools are connected. You learn all of these equations, and then it's seemingly unrelated to how you actually implement it using tools like STAN. It's also unclear how the theory is related to what you might already know, which are things like regression modeling. All of this put together typically means that it's quite overwhelming for beginners. So in this series, I'm going to purposely spend less time on the math and more time on examples using the STAN programming language. Of course, we'll do a little bit of math, but only enough for you to understand what and why we code. By the end of the series, you have plenty of practice and examples of writing a variety of STAN programs and doing Bayesian inference from start to finish. So the structure of the course will look something like this. I'll spend one video talking about concepts, no coding. This should give you all the information you need to know and understand the next six, which will focus on examples. In each episode, we'll go through an entire project in detail from start to finish. In each one, I'll be going through a particular concept that builds upon the previous. The fun part will be that all the projects will be sports related, ranging from match prediction, team rating, and even a table tennis model. The prerequisites for this course are knowledge of how to use R and RStudio, some knowledge of basic statistics with some experience building regression models or doing machine learning. And if you don't have those, that's okay, but check out some useful links in the description box to help you get started. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video and want to learn more about Stan and Bayesian inference, Make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on your notifications bell. I'll see you in the next episode where we'll dive into some of the basic math concepts that you'll need to write your first STAM program. Okay, okay, okay. You've convinced me. I'm ready to learn. Um, let me just get a pencil um, so we can get Uh. You need
Bayesian inference. Uncertainty on the parameters, 20 data points, that's well, then you really shouldn't have any problem then. Wait, I just got an idea I'm going to pursue. I'll do Bayesian stats in a language whose name is, well it's you, Stan.